Hello and welcome. I'm Bruce Viagli, Chair of the ISC Program Committee. And I'm Colin Dardane, the Chair of the Stroke Council. Hello, I'm Karen Fury, Vice Chair of the Stroke Council. Hi, I'm Miguel Perez Pinson. I'm the Vice Chair of the ISC Program Committee. So I think we've had a terrific program this year. The science has been extraordinary. While there hasn't been any earth-shattering trial results, I think there were several trials that were compelling, several trials that uh, addressed important research questions and will definitely inform future design of trials that address those same questions. For instance, I enjoyed the head post trial. This was a trial that looked at um, comparing the uh, positioning of the bed whether flat versus at an incline in patients who experienced an acute ischemic stroke or an ICH. While the trial results were neutral, it was the largest nurse-driven trial that's been done to date at a very novel design, a cluster um, uh, crossover trial design, which was very innovative and could potentially inform future designs. And potentially in the future, it could focus on more severe stroke patients. I also enjoyed seeing the Picasso trial as well. This is a trial that looked at silostazole versus aspirin in patients who had um, MRI-defined cerebral microbleeds, and while the primary outcome was not significant, there were a host of secondary outcomes that were promising and could definitely be explored in the future. Um, another very compelling uh, trial was the Shake, Rattle, and Roll trial. This was a trial in the Kaiser system in Northern California, looked at uh, two interventions compared to standard care in, to control uh, blood pressure in African Americans versus Caucasians, and actually showed that blood pressure control was 7% better in African Americans compared to Caucasians. Now, the, um, the uh, question, of course, would be whether this could be generalized to um, African Americans who are not necessarily in the middle class and might be more compliant with an enhanced lifestyle intervention. Uh, more recently, today, uh, we heard about the um, ASSORT trial, which looked at early versus delayed statin use in acute ischemic stroke. Um, again, the results were neutral, but definitely endorsed the early initiation strategy because there was a difference in terms of reaching target LDL levels on time in those who received the early statin use. And so it's one thing to talk about recovery from an index stroke. It's another thing to talk about starting secondary stroke prevention early. Was, it, was especially promising, I thought, was the study that looked at the vagal nerve stimulator in patients who had experienced a stroke and had upper arm weakness. Um, this is now the second pilot study that has strongly suggested across a whole host of endpoints that this strategy of vagal nerve stimulator could actually help to improve um, strength in people who have um, an upper arm weakness. Colin, what do you think? Thanks, Bruce. I, I agree. It's been an outstanding meeting. It, uh, Second highest attended uh, since since LA. Um, very diverse group of membership as as usually as usual, and the the interventional community has been um, been well represented here. There have been a couple uh, uh, good trials that were presented at the main stage. Uh, one of them were uh, both of them industry sponsored. Both of them related to a particular proprietary device, uh, and both of them uh, incrementally important in terms of establishing in the one. One case, uh, very good safety data using the pipeline de device off-label for small unruptured aneurysms. Uh, still, one thing not touched on so much in that paper uh, is the the very good natural history of those those aneurysms, and that's uh, that's uh, an issue. But at least mechanically and technically, this device for small aneurysms along that segment of, of the vessel, uh, very good angiographic results and a very nice safety profile. Another trial was uh, a hydrogel trial for, for achieving better aneurysm, uh, better aneurysm occlusion rates that also was, was very positive with a very good safety profile as well. So I think both of those are going to be very useful for our community in uh, the aneurysm treatment uh, domain in terms of, of de deciding which devices to use and which may be the best, uh, best tool for the, for the job. I thought, too, that... Uh, that the symposia were, were outstanding again this year, and a lot of concurrent sessions that made it difficult to go to some of the really exciting mm -hmm. uh, ones, but uh, the two, two that stood out in my mind as being particularly good was the, the high vessel imaging, the high resolution vessel wall imaging session, which had extraordinarily good complimentary talks from uh, all the leaders in the field, and I learned quite a bit about, about that emerging area. And uh, uh, a good one on vertebral basilar disease led by Two of really the giants in our community, Lou Kaplan and J.P. Moore, and again some very good complimentary talks about the spectrum of 
vertebral basilar disease, dissection, atherosclerosis, thumb thrombectomy, uh, with a very good representation from uh, our colleagues and, and members from the, from Asia, Korean, Japanese, uh, Chinese um, 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 stroke uh, physicians and, and interventionists. So again, um, it's been a great two and a half days, and uh, uh, learned a lot, and 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 looking forward actually when I get back to using stroke on demand to catch up on the things that I missed. One of the best things about this meeting is that there's a, a really um, nice mixture of visionary science, things that are going to be transforming our field in the next years to decade. Um, but in addition, there, there were trials presented that are extraordinarily practical. And Bruce, you mentioned one, and that's the head position trial, something so simple. But, um, but something that we can take home from this meeting and institute immediately uh, in the patients that we care for. Another study that was presented that also is thought-provoking and very clinically relevant had to do with restarting anticoagulation in patients who had a hemorrhage. This is a problem that we face very often. Uh, there's really no uh, strong evidence to support whether anticoagulation should be restarted, and if so, when, or whether it should be withheld in patients who've already suffered a hemorrhage or may have evidence of cerebral amyloid angiopathy. The study that was presented was a meta-analysis. Um, it suggested that there was a benefit to restarting anticoagulation with lower mortality. Um, and it is definitely hypothesis generating. Hopefully in the future there'll be a definitive trial to help address this very important question. One of the advantages of coming to the meeting is being able to um, not only hear these wonderful lectures, but, but to, to participate in some of the fun. Uh, and one of the things that I think uh, is in our future, but also really uh, uh, very exciting to, to uh, begin to interact with, uh, is the simulation center. Um, and that is a way that we may be able to uh, educate uh, our trainees uh, in the future about how to manage stroke care. Uh, the simulation center uses uh, scripted scenarios to teach people about how to administer intravenous thrombolysis, make decisions about mechanical thrombectomy, and manage intracerebral hemorrhage. Uh, so it's a very inter interactive and dynamic way uh, for the next generation of stroke clinicians to learn about managing stroke. All right, so following from the uh, simulation uh, uh, sessions, we also have some uh, fun with the game of strokes. It's a new session that we had. It's basic, basically educational, you know, in a way, but with some fun. It was a competition uh, with uh, uh, different teams. We have uh, uh, the North America, Europe, and uh, Australia and Asia. So uh, basically with questions about uh, neurological stroke uh, uh, cases. And uh, so it was a very fun educational uh, session. I think that was uh, a, a new thing in the stroke conference. Uh, we also had the set talks uh, that are TED type talks. I think those were also amazing. Uh, we had great speakers. Uh, I think uh, these are two sessions that have been added now to uh, the Stroke Conference, and we will, will continue over the years to, to improve upon what we have uh, uh, brought up to the uh, conference. On the basic science uh, portion, uh, there were some really exciting uh, talks, um, sessions about uh, inflammation. Uh, inflammation has always been thought of something that is actually uh, negative. But in this session, they, they, was, they were exploring about cytokines and cells of the immune system that, in fact, are beneficial. So that was an exciting session. And there was another session about proteases uh, that uh, was also really exciting, uh, like TPAs is a protease. So basically, uh, <clears throat> in this session, they were looking at uh, uh, the effects of these proteases on the systemic uh, uh, system and in the CNS. Uh, finally, I think I would like to mention the, uh, the, the, this network, the viewer network, that is uh, basically uh, three institutions uh, working together, uh, collaborating, and uh, having an interaction between clinical and basic science. I think that was uh, a beautiful session this, this morning, uh, and uh, is part of the, uh, the goals of the uh, ISC. 
And so, Miguel, I just want to piggyback on what you said in terms of the new sessions. We incorporated three new sessions this year, Game of Strokes, as you mentioned. I just want to publicly recognize and thank all the participants. It was so gratifying to see our colleagues be so um, such good sports um, um, as they as they took on those questions. Because we all learned quite a bit, and this is something, as you mentioned, Miguel, will become a staple. I think of ISC. It was really fun. It was standing room only, um, and we have also have to thank Dr. Biller, who was the moderator and the producer of the questions. It was really a great session, and for the set talks as well, to Dr. Chop, Dr. Johnston, Dr. Adams and Dr. Davis, very, very illuminating talks, and to the patients who even showed up yes. wearing exoskeletons mm -hmm. just to uh, drive home the points, it was very, very instructive. The third session that we haven't spoken about, which we'll have later today, is the Crossfire Debates, which Colin will be participating mm -hmm. in, but we expect that's going to be fireworks and very, very entertaining <laughs> and educative as well. Finally, I just want to say something about the international participation. It's been rising every year. We had about 35% uh, international ent attendees. We want to encourage more um, international ent attendees to join us at ISC. We also had six uh, jointly sponsored symposia with the Korean Stroke Society, the um, uh, uh, Nigerian Stroke Society, with the uh, Pan American um, uh, Organization, the WSO, uh, the World Stroke Organization as well. So it was great to have these symposia and to speak about things that actually have a global impact. So that was very, very helpful. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add one thing that popped in my head too. Uh, hearing about all these wonderful sessions, and so many of these are concurrent, and the Stroke on Demand uh, product really is a great, useful way of downloading slide sets from talks that are particularly valuable in your own community, but then also hearing some of these talks. And one of them I thought that I really enjoyed was Clark Haley's uh, mm -hmm. Sherman Award acceptance, which really went emphasized the critical importance of randomized trials in our community and expressing his concerns about accepting lower ev ev levels of evidence and kind of just the history of the TPA trial which is pivotal in our in our community and uh, I, I, if you didn't if you weren't there although I think everyone was there <laughs> that was in this yeah. room uh, that that would be one worth looking at so on behalf of my colleagues here, I just want to say thank, thanks to all of you for um, your interest and participation in ISC. We look forward to seeing you next year in Los Angeles, California. Um, please remember that the dates this year are a little bit earlier than typical for ISC, January 24th to January 26th. Please, uh, if you have ideas for uh, sessions that we can have for next year, please feel free to submit them. The deadline for that is March 24th. And the deadline for abstract submission is August the 1st. But thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in the future.